Is it time to start thinking about trades? Why does the Giants' clubhouse and dugout seem less cohesive, perhaps, than it did a year ago? So we're going to get to those questions and many others on today's mailbag edition of the show. You are Locked On Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked on Giants, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspic, and on the show we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday, talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data-driven and rational, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015, and I'm a lifelong fan. Thank you for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts. And for those of you watching on YouTube, totally different background today. I'm actually on the road, and the audio is going to sound a little bit different for those of you who are regular listeners. Uh, Don't be alarmed. It's temporary. Audio should still be fine. But anyway, coming up on today's show, we are going to jump into some mailbag questions because I refuse. I outright refuse to really dwell on yesterday's game not because I don't think it matters but because it just was so frustrating and I I really have nothing to say about it and hopefully uh, in this weekend in Miami the Giants can at least split this series if they lose the series then on Monday we're going to start talking about the the real problems going on with the San Francisco Giants over an extended period of time but let's just hope you know maybe they pull off the next three or just, just at least win two of the next three and I'll be okay but anyway Let's just jump into some questions that are related. First question comes from Jesse, who says, how motivated will the Giants be to make a big trade before the deadline? It would be nice to have some thump in the middle of the lineup, but our offense has been so feast or famine, it's unclear how much one player would help, whose expense could impact our future. Thoughts. So yeah, I do have thoughts. And, and, you know, I've been thinking about, for those of you who have listened a lot, you know I was saying all along, like, We need about 45 games until we can take our first hard look at the state of the team. And I've been thinking, what does that mean exactly? Because obviously the season isn't over after 45 games. You've still got 70% of the season left even now after 50 games. By the way, the Giants are 27 and 23. They've got a plus 18 run differential that has a 27 and 23 expected record. So uh, what does it mean though? to have played that much of a season. And for me, it's like an appropriate time to start looking at where you have needs and what your needs might be. And so it is, for the first time, really an appropriate time to start talking about trades. And kind of the issue for me, and yes, I do I do think to answer your question, how, how motivated will the Giants be to make a big trade? I'm not sure it has to be a big trade, but I definitely think this is a team with needs, much like last year. I mean, it was different last year. I think that going after a big fish, so to speak, in Chris Bryant, even though perhaps he was a little bit of an overrated player, was, you know, Farhan Zaidi himself said that it was kind of about rewarding that team for the effort that they had put in, and they wanted to be really careful about not messing with the dynamics, chemistry, so to speak, of the clubhouse, given that it was so great. They Many people, including Zaidi, said it was the best they had ever been around in their experience in the game. And he's been in the game for a long time, seen many different teams that have been good. A's, Dodgers were good every year when he was there. And it was the best chemistry he had seen. So they didn't want to mess with that. This year, I don't think there's anything you just don't want to mess with because I don't get that same type of vibe. And that is a, another question that is asked of me but for me, it's a lot about winning. We'll talk more about why the vibe is what it is. And and last year, I mean, you're on a 107-win trajectory. It's hard not to have a good time while the good times are rolling. But they have a lot of needs. Like, I just want to say, I think that ultimately the starting pitching will probably be fine if you, if you get health the rest of the way out of Webb, Rodon, Wood pitched pretty well last night. Cobb, I just really believe the peripherals are going to come into play and he'll have a much better season from here on out in terms of actual results. And then Di Sclafani, you've got Boyd in the mix. Junis has been good. So I I do believe that their starting pitching should 
end up being a strength when all is said and done. So I'm not sure you need to add there necessarily, although you could always go after like a frontline guy and then give yourself, you would just put yourself in a great position. Giants are more likely than not going to the postseason at this moment in time. There is expanded playoffs. They do have a three game lead over a playoff spot. So as much as it's been a struggle, it's worth keeping in mind that if the season ended today, they would be what in Milwaukee, I believe. Yeah. In Milwaukee for a best of three series, the postseason format has changed and that would be the situation. Three games, best of three, all in Milwaukee would be the case of it. And if the season ended today, but I do think that they look like they could use possibly some bullpen help. There's a lot to say about the bullpen. The bullpen has not really been all that effective. We saw it again yesterday. Camilo Duvall was not great again. And and for him, it's not been smooth sailing like it kind of was in the last month of the 2021 season. And I could do a whole segment or show about this, but to me, that's why, because bullpen they were the best bullpen in baseball last year by ERA, and that's why it's important to have a flexible roster with your bullpen, especially like guys who can be optioned, guys you're not committing huge money to. Because as we saw with like Mark Melanson, it can go the same way. Even if you sign a big name player to a big deal, the production can just plummet suddenly, and then that's a much worse situation when they're not performing and there's nothing you can really do about it. So. They do have that flexibility. They have a lot of guys who can be optioned. They have a lot of guys whose deals are coming up. They have a lot of club options in that mix. And so it is they're in a good position in terms of kind of projecting forward their bullpen situation. That being said, I think a trade for like a good reliever is also something that could make sense. And then on offense, they could certainly use some help. I still think about Wilson Contreras. I know that, uh, I mean, is it, do I really want to say I told you so? On A lot of people pushed back when I said we would anticipate some Joey Bart struggles. Well, guess what? It's been a struggle, right? Like he's, I don't know how much longer they can just have basically, it's almost like having a pitcher spot in the lineup. I think he, he had a decent game yesterday, was traveling, not able to watch, but was able to listen, kind of a little bit discombobulated. But um a catcher upgrade like Wilson Contreras is out there. He's a free agent at the end of the year. The Cubs will probably end up trading him and the Giants make as much sense as any team. And Joey Bart can be optioned. I don't know if they want both Bart and Papirski just in AAA together. Maybe they do and just share the time and send down Henoves. I, I don't know exactly how they would work that out. But if you can have Contreras and Casale, you would just go from a not great catcher situation, which let's be honest, most teams don't have a great catcher situation, but then you would go back to being one of the best. And Contreras is a legit hitter, not just a good hitter for a catcher. So that would be a big bat in the middle of the lineup. They have the history of making deals with the Cubs. It would probably require a similar cost, if not more than Bryant did, but it's something to look out for. And then all over the diamond to me, they could potentially use just help in the lineup is how it has seemed to me. So coming up next, we're going to talk about the clubhouse. We're going to talk more about David VR. We're going to talk about the line change and whether the Giants do it a little bit too much. So all of that in just a minute. But first, with spring in the air, it's a time of renewal and growth, personally and professionally. As your small business grows, LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Yes, you heard me right. Uh, Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know that every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MLB to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, as promised, we're going to continue to dip into some mailbag questions here. we have an important favor to ask of you, though. Uh, we've put together a survey so we can learn more about listeners like you and make your favorite Locked On podcasts even better. This is your opportunity to tell us what you like and don't like about Locked On podcasts. Go to LockedOnPodcast.com 
slash survey right now to get started. It won't take very long, and everyone that completes a survey can qualify for a chance to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards. To take your audience survey, go to LockedOnPodcasts.com slash survey. Thank you for your help. So yeah, let's continue going through some of these questions. The next one comes from B Love, who says, the vibe in the clubhouse looks completely different this year. Not as cohesive and fun, it seems. What's up? And to me, it always comes down to winning. I think that they're frustrated. This They, they know that they won 107 games last year, and it just hasn't been easy. It has been a grind, and it's been a struggle. To me, they've... Like, I'm just kind of trying to, because I, I feel you. I just think that they're a little bit flat as a team. And seemingly every day, even though their overall offensive numbers are solid and in the top third of, of baseball and even higher in some cases, uh, they they seemingly go through stretches every game where they're just like easy, listless outs at the plate where there's just non-competitive at-bats just strike one, strike two, strike three, or weak ground ball, 0-2 count, just over and over. And when you're going through that, it's hard to be like having fun on the dugout. I think part of it, they don't have a lot of young talent either. I think teams need, not that they really had this much last year, I guess Logan Webb kind of qualified, and then you had some new guys contributing like Lamont Wade. I think that a Luis Gonzalez probably brings as much as anyone in terms of that clubhouse vibe i apologize if you hear that there's a street right outside but uh, they don't really have any young talent and i think that young talent when you look across the league and you see early 20s guys breaking into the league and having success that energizes people and so for me they need some of that and it's kind of crazy how we're still waiting for this wave of prospects to come up and make an impact we've seen bart we've seen elliot ramos now We've seen other guys, Sean Jelly. I thought he provided some energy when he was here. Maybe we see more of him. But like I said, I think their starting rotation is actually in a decent spot. But, you know, when you have a guy like Joey Bart struggling, then I'm not sure it's very energizing. And in fact, you see him being frustrated. And uh, I think I think that the team feels that. And so you're you're kind of feeling guys who are just like really going through it. And what is there to really be having a great old time about so there to me uh, part of it to be honest their their whole philosophy is to not get too high or too low like when the times are good they don't want to get overconfident when the times are bad they don't want to get overly down about it but that just kind of does make for like boring personalities in in a sense like you don't see that fire and that emotion so much from this team but part of that is by design, and I'm not saying it's a bad idea to have that philosophy because, hey, it really generally has worked. And the season they had last year, we don't get to just write it off and say, oh, everything went right. It doesn't count. They they won 107 games. And if you I mean, this year they've had a ton of injuries and they haven't really played all that well. And they're still 27 and 23 and in playoff position. So what they're doing has generally worked. But at the same time. There is, I mean, but if you think last year was was great in terms of the, the character and the chemistry, which apparently it was, then it's hard for me to say something is different with their whole philosophy about not too high or too low this year. To me, it's just about that they've struggled. I don't think, I mean, you lose some important guys too, like Solano and Kevin Gosman, Buster Posey's not there. These are absences that are felt, and you've got your veteran leaders like Crawford, who's not playing well, and Brandon Belt, who hasn't been on the field, and Longoria is quite old and hasn't, I mean, he's been productive, but he barely has played, and he came back, and now he's already dealing dealing with another injury. So there's kind of a leadership gap, so to speak. There's not like, I don't know, there's just, they're missing some players. I think that they're, they're, they're not quite where they would want to be. And so that's when we do tie it in as well with what I was saying with the trade deadline. Maybe you add in, you know, J.D. Martinez could be available. Xander Bogarts could be available. Uh, Wilson Contreras, like I said. So maybe certain players can help change that. And 
part of it, it's not just like the veteran leader that you need. It's more like we've got good players and we're confident and we believe we can go out there and beat you every single night because of it. I just think they're kind of like missing an identity in some ways. So that's that's how I see it right now. So the next question comes from John, who asks, time to rethink the routine use of the line change. Often this season with the game on the line, the guy who pinch hit in the sixth faces a same side matchup in the eighth or ninth. So John, I honestly don't see it that way at all because, okay, you're saying the guy who pinch hit in the sixth faces a non-platoon advantage later in the game. But if you don't pinch hit for him, then you're getting the non-platoon advantage in the sixth, and then you're getting it in the ninth. So either way, you're getting it one time and not getting it the other time. And the reason they do it is because they believe it's a high leverage moment in that moment, and you don't know if later in the game it's going to be high leverage because maybe you score a bunch of runs, maybe the opponent scores a bunch of runs. And so if it's even like medium high leverage in the sixth, they're willing to make that move. And it, it I also must say, it's what they did last year. And so, no, I don't think that you rethink it just because maybe that's happened a few times. They're also kind of down right now. They're not even able, they've got a bunch of lefties in the lineup against a lefty. They're not really even close to full strength and it's hurting their ability to match up. And it, it has a trickle effect to later in the game when they they certainly don't have the greatest ability. They did the other night, right? They started all these righties, and then they had uh, La Stella and Peterson and Crawford and Yastrzemski on the bench, and they were able to go to them. That's when the Phillies had no lefty relievers available, so you're kind of licking your lips at that opportunity, and it, it did end up working out when they were able to bring those guys in, but you knew they would never not have the platoon advantage later in the game. But for me, like I said... Either scenario, you're getting one good matchup and one less than ideal, and they want to do it in the situation they know at least is somewhat high leverage when later on you don't know. So that's my thoughts on that. Coming up next, we're going to talk about uh, Evan Longoria and David Villar. David Villar has just continued to mash. We'll check in on his numbers and talk about how they could possibly try to get him onto the roster. But first, don't you love a chewy, chocolatey brownie? What about a caramel brownie with caramely, caramel swirled on top? So good. What if I told you you can have all of that chewy, chocolatey deliciousness plus 17 grams of protein? Well, you're in luck because caramel brownie bars are available at Built.com right now, and you got to act fast because they are a fan, fan favorite. The best part, caramel brownie bars are covered in 100% real chocolate, Uh, With Built, you don't have to sacrifice tasty for healthy. You can have both. And that's what I love most about Built Bars. Normally, it is a sacrifice. You either eat something healthy or you eat something delicious. But with Built Bar, it's like eating a candy bar. But then you look at the the profile. I'm all about these kind of underlying metrics. And we're talking low sugar, low calorie, high protein, high fiber. It's really a no-brainer. Go to Built.com. Use promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. All right, as promised, we are going to continue to answer some more questions. The next question comes from Thomas, who says, So I guess we can't DFA Longoria to get a look at VR, can we? Maybe we try him out in left field. So I have been wanting to address David VR again, because something I noticed last time we talked about him, was that they were moving him around. He wasn't playing in the outfield, but he has been playing different positions in the infield. He's played first base, he's played some second base. And so to me, that is a strong indicator that they want to give him a look, but they just haven't really been able to figure out where exactly he would fit. And so as I look here, I'm not easily able to see where he's been playing game by game in AAA, but yeah, he's played 27 innings now at second base. He started three games at second base in AAA this season. He started 10 games at first base, and he started uh, 25 games at third base. So I think that the second base stuff is new, and that's inter- interesting because, you know, Tyro Estrada is versatile. Tyro Estrada can play the outfield. I don't think that they want to put David VR in the outfield, but Estrada could. And you could have David VR 
at second base, but of course you've got other options there. I mean, La Stella has mostly been a DH since coming back because of his, he's clearly not 100% healthy, which is a problem. And when they got La Stella, he didn't really have this injury. And so this is, I mean, he, his bat plays though. I think we've seen someone was saying to me, La Stella doesn't hit for power. He's hitting for more power than anybody on the Giants. I mean, he's got like 12 hits and only four of them are singles. So power doesn't have to be just homers. Tommy La Stella has a 250 isolated power. The on-base percentage is just 294. That needs to go up, but the isolated power being 250 uh, means he's producing with power, but not producing any defensive value. So that it does hurt, but it, but he's signed for the next two years. I don't think La Stella is going anywhere, but David VR. So yeah, I don't think you're going to DFA Evan Longoria to get him onto the roster, but to me, I'm sure there's some kind of 40-man move because that's the thing is that and you know this, that's why you're asking this question, but not everyone is aware that VR is not on the 40-man roster. I believe he's Rule 5 eligible in the offseason, which would mean that he will need to be added to the 40-man roster by next winter. Otherwise, a team can take him in the Rule 5 draft, which means they can just take him from your organization, and he would definitely be taken. I don't, I'm not an expert on the Rule 5 draft, but I would imagine he might even go first, like if he wasn't protected. So they're going to have to add him eventually. And so, yeah, I mean, is there some kind of move you could make? I see some DFA candidates. I mean, Kevin Padlow is potentially a DFA candidate. You've got Stuart Fairchild on the 40-man roster. There aren't a ton of great options in, in terms of a 40-man move that you could make as I scroll through the list here but to me it might be worth it because this team does kind of need an infusion of some new talent like i was saying it all ties together but what vr has done is he's got a 291 average 412 on base 669 slugging these numbers completely jump off the page he has 16 home runs in 182 plate appearances strikeout rate is a little high when i see 27 and a half percent in triple a you know, you expect that that number is going to go up if he comes to the major leagues. But he hit another home run last night. This this guy just hasn't been able to be slowed down at all this season. So it is a little bit curious that we haven't seen him so far. But I think part of it is just about the fit and where is he going to play. And I don't know. I haven't watched him play a lot of defense. So it could just be that they have concerns about his defensive ability. But my goodness, that's a 377 isolated power. The steamer projection system has him at a 336 weighted on base average and a 118 weighted runs created plus. So for me, they got to give this guy a look at some point. He's 25 years old, uh, young talent, and he's he's earned it. And typically they like to give opportunities to guys who go out there and dominate. And what else can he do? He's doing this in AAA. So the only thing left for him is to get called up. And for me, it, it might not be far off given that they're kind of going through a rut right now and, and he's just forced the issue. So anyway, that is all the time we have for today. They wouldn't DFA Longoria, I don't think, because he's, again, been productive when he's been out there. But he hasn't been out there much. So major changes, I wouldn't put it past them. But I don't think that's the move to make right now. There are other moves that would be less costly, I think. So that's all the time we have for today. Thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen. Now make your second listen the Locked on MLB podcast. MLB expert Paul Francis Sullivan brings humor, passion, and unique perspective on every team and the biggest stories around the league. Follow the number one daily league-wide podcast Locked on MLB on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. Once again, my name is Ben Kaspic. Check me out on Twitter at Ben Kaspic, K-A-S-P-I-C-K. If you like this show, please smash the like button, give it five stars, whatever you can do helps me out so much. So thank you in advance and thank you to everyone who's done so already, truly. Uh, have a great weekend. I can't wait to be with you again on Monday. We'll be talking about what we learned over the weekend. Hopefully the Giants can get things back on track. I'm sure we'll be talking about some roster moves. They seem to make them every single day. So have a great weekend. Can't wait to be with you again on Monday. Thanks again for listening. Stay locked on Giants.